Lego. What's up, YouTube? It's Chuck Taylor coming at you with another video, but not a review video. Um, today I'm just going to be sharing with y'all a little bit of knowledge I've had over the years, some different tips. I used to get sneakers for decent prices, and also just where I get my shoes from in general. Maybe help some of y'all out as far as y'all sneaker hunting. First off, where do I get my shoes from? So, I get my shoes from a lot of different places. I wrote out a quick little list of all the different places I got my shoes from over the years in the Texas area. So, if you're in another city, another state, then y'all kind of know better. If y'all want to drop in the comment box below where I get y'all shoes from, help out people in your area, that'll definitely be much appreciated. But that's right here in Texas. When I was in Houston, one of my main spots was 8-1 Sneaker House. I would at least show up there like maybe once or twice a month. See what, see what at least they had. Sometimes buy stuff, sometimes not. It is a consignment shop. So as far as the pricing, you find some real, real good prices. You find some rate prices and everywhere in between. But for the most part, they do have some pretty decent prices with that. That's going to be located over by Memorial City Mall. Um, you also have Shannon Street Waves. That is going to be a skateboard shop. So SBs. They carry those by Willowbrook Mall in Houston. Then you have Southside Skate Shop. I've never been there. People always told me they had a really good SB account, though. So next time I'm in Houston, I would definitely be checking them out. Um, as for the San Antonio area, Soul Boutique, real nice Nikes. They got, like, the Galaxy Foams and different things like that. They get all the exclusive Nikes. Um, if you're looking for SBs, then Fast Forward, and you have Evolution Skate Shop as well. Um, both of those spots, nice SB accounts. Evolution Skateboard Shop, they just got their SB account right before I left. So as far as the selection, mm, they got a little bit, but not as much. Fast Forward definitely has it all, though. Um, as far as the Austin area, you have a Fast Forward in Austin as well. You also have another skate shop by UT. It's called Technar. I believe I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right. But both of those shops definitely will take care of you on the SBs. Um, and then as far as Nice Kicks, that's the one everybody know about in Austin. That's right down the street from UT as well. Nice Nikes, Jordans, whatever. They got a lot of different stuff there. Nice little boutique shop. Uh, as for here in Dallas, I haven't really found too many spots. Um, probably my favorite spot down here is Index Skateboard Supply. That's where I get all my SBs from now since so I'm down here in Dallas. So be sure to check them out right off of 75 and Mockingbird. So besides going into stores and getting my shoes, my most preferred method is going to be online. Reason being, you can go into a store, they only got, they only can find to what people have in that area or to what their little store gets. Online, you got people from all over the country posting stuff, so you can find really whatever, whenever. Simple as that. But um, as for online, Facebook and Craigslist, probably my two main sources for finding shoes. A lot of different groups on Facebook related to shoes here in the Houston area or here in the Texas in general. I have about five different groups I'll, I'll go and look through on a daily basis to see what's available. Um, Craigslist, that's where I really got my start at with buying shoes and finding it all online. With that, you do have to be careful because you never know who you could be dealing with. So be safe with that especially. Um, eBay, of course, eBay, you may find really good prices, you may find really rate prices, anywhere in between. Of course, you can always bid on it, try to keep it as low as possible, but it's kind of just a toss-up with that, but it's definitely worth taking a look at. I bought a few pairs off of eBay. Yeah. Long Island Soul Supply, that is an online consignment shop. They have some real good prices. Compared to a lot of consignment shops I go to and I see, they have a lot of really, really good prices on some really nice shoes. So be sure to check them out. So people always ask me, why don't I get shoes early? Um, the reason why I don't get shoes early and the reason how I get really good prices on my shoes kind of goes hand in hand. When you get shoes early, you're looking to pay at least about $300 to get them early. If you get them on release date, that's cool. You pay retail. No problem with that. If you get them soon after release date, you're looking to pay about 70, 80, 100 some dollars more to get them right like a couple days after. But me personally, I prefer to get them 
a couple months after the release because with Jordan, really with any kind of Jordan or Nikes, it's all about hype. Nike builds up all this hype on their shoes when they, before they come out. And once the shoe drops, everybody boom, 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 boom. There's not all this money to get them for retail. Then you got half of you want to want to uh, want to resell them, want to bump the price up times like 200 percent or whatever. And you got people that want to go and pay that amount, which is crazy. I would never do that. Um, if you balling like that, then hey, that's you. So I ain't knocking nobody for getting the shoes how you get it. But um, I would never do that. But the key is, if you want to just have a little bit of patience with it, wait for a few months, let a few more major releases happen. People forget about that shoe that released in January. Nobody thinking about that come, come July and August. So I'll wait, I'll wait three or four months, just chill on it, pick up me some other stuff that I can find at good prices. And then once August come around, I'll come back, hey, let me get that shoe right now. And then do the do put it in on eBay. You might find some really, really high prices, some really, really low prices. Type it in on like Craigslist, you'll find people that can't sell them now because nobody cares about them no more. Find them for, for below retail, really. I found a pair of um, cement fours actually the other day for like a bill. And they were like, I had to do the semi pictures and everything. Um, somebody else ended up buying them, but they like this whole sole. He said they wore them one time, mostly inside. The whole sole was still clean. No creasing, a size 10 for a bill. So if you just wait and be patient, you can easily find steals like that on a regular basis. Me personally, when shoes first come out, I hate buying them because you can't even wear them. Well, me personally, I wouldn't wear them because I've been to the mall a few times and seen like a group of like four or five dudes all wearing the same exact shoes. And to me, that's just, it's, if that's what you want to do, that's cool with you. But to me, I'm not trying to be matching with every single other person that's out there. I'm going to give me something that nobody got. I'm going to pull something out that was like six, seven months ago or a few years back. I'm going to pull those out and be breaking necks. That's just personal opinion. But just be patient on it. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Don't get caught up in the hype. All right, so fake tennis shoes. What is that to say? Me, um... I can spot a fake pair of tennis shoes real easy. I've been doing this for a long time. Me, before I was actually making money like I do now when I was still in middle school, hey, I rock fake tennis shoes. My parents didn't want to buy me J's. They bought me just Nikes. So I would be like, I would go on like the little websites or whatever, and I would find me some shoes I like in some kind of crazy wild color. I knew they were fake, but I didn't care. I was in it for like 60 bucks at the time. I was in middle school, so I was saving up like lunch money, whatever. And I would do that, so I, I've, I've had fake shoes before. I can tell the difference very easily. Um, and you can too if you just kind of pay a little bit of attention to it, I'm sure. But it's real easy to spot. The first thing you can always spot is the quality and the material. Um, on like different shoes like 11s, I've seen so many fakes of those. One way you can easily tell is the 23 on the back. On the fake ones, like the 23 is all just like squinched together. You can't even tell it say 23. On the real ones, it's going to be very defined 23. Um, other different shoes, other different ways to tell. But 11 is probably one of the biggest, most popular shoes that I see a lot of fakes of. So that's why I did mention that. But the quality in general, um, the material is going to be different. Make sure you know what the material should be. Like on thir like on the retro 13s, like on the breads, I've seen so many fake pairs of those. On the fakes, the tongue is always all leather. On the real ones, the tongue is suede. Or it's like a new buck, not suede, but new buck. So that's, it's like a lot of different little key things you can tell about shoes, materials, how it feels, how it looks, how it should shine. Like, it's little things like that you just got to pay, pay attention to. Um, of course, just the patterns. It, the biggest excuse I've ever heard is it was dark when I met the person to, to get the shoes. That can't be an excuse. Like You can't blame you going out at nighttime, meeting somebody in the dark on you trading somebody or buying some shoes with $200 that was fake. Like Straight up. It's really no excuse. Ask questions. Tell that person to send you pictures. And 
straight up, do not meet in the dark to begin with. That's just unsafe. Meet somewhere in public. Meet somewhere that's well lit. Meet somewhere that you can actually get a nice look at what they're handing you. Don't just take a box, give them the money, and keep going. Because if you just take the box and you don't look, then you can open up, open up that box later and it'd be a box of bricks. Like, I understand if it's your boy, if it's somebody you trust, then okay, you might just give them the money and keep it moving. Because I know uh, my boys, whenever I used to buy shoes from them or sell shoes to them, they just like, alright, cool. They give your money, keep it moving, appreciate it, man, keep, keep it going. But if you don't know somebody from, if you just your first time meeting somebody, even if it's your third time, fourth time meeting somebody, you never know. They, people would do anything really to come up these days. I've had people to tell me, yeah, whatever, I didn't look in the box when I got them. When I opened up the box, then, yeah, they weren't real or this or this. Or I didn't look at the tag on the box and the tags like all written off sloppy and stuff. So you can tell that the box isn't real. So they mean the shoes isn't real either. Even the feeling of the box itself, um, on fake boxes usually, they're like really, really small or like kind of odd shape and they fall apart real easy. Even the writing on it, like as you can see on this box here, that's where the violet tins. The writing is all professional. You see how the color is. If this was like a fake pair, it might say something like white slash purple. And it, I don't know, it'll have some kind of random skew number down that is not right. But if you have to, pull out your phone. You've got a smartphone, that's going to be the, your, your main key right there if you have any questions. Pull out your smartphone. Boom, 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 put it in Google, da 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 whatever the SKU number is. See if that shoe pulls up when you type in the SKU from the shoe that they're giving you. That's probably a, a quick, easy way to be able to tell real, real quickly. Um, and also, just like I said, ask questions. Don't ask questions after, ask questions before. It's better to be safe than sorry. Don't go off of just kind of like, well, I think they real. You thinking that they real doesn't get you back your money. Straight up, because... Once you meet that person at one time, y'all go y'all separate ways, that person, they probably will never hit you up again if they know they sold you some fake shoes. I can actually guarantee you they'll never hit you up again, and your chances of even seeing them is slim to none. Straight up. So, better to be safe than sorry. Ask questions before, not after, and don't be afraid to ask questions. We all, uh, uh, the sneakerhead culture, it's all a big family. People always willing to lend knowledge the same way how I'm doing in this video here. All right, and the last point here, networking. Networking in the shoe game is probably one of your biggest keys. The same way how I'm giving y'all this video, spit knowledge and tips I've learned, um, this is networking right here. Y'all watching my video, y'all commenting, subscribing, whatever, messaging me, that's called networking. Um, when it comes to the shoe game, networking has many different benefits. Um, the biggest benefit that I've seen is just getting shoes in general. That's the one thing that all sneakerheads love to do. Is love to get shoes and, of course, get money if you're looking to sell something. But due to, due to me networking with so many different people, a lot of times people may come, may come up to me like, Hey, yo, I got this pair of shoes. You're the first person I'm offering it to. If you want to cop them from me, I'll give them to you for X amount instead of being X amount. You already know in your head the shoe go for two hundred fifty dollars, but they trying to give it to you for two bills because you they boy because you chopped it up with them because y'all are friends now due to you networking. So last key with the shoe game is just network, talk to people, see what just talk to people in general. It ain't got to be about shoes, but just about life. But remember that shoes is always going to be a connection with that person. So that's you can that's where you can always build that bridge at. But. That is pretty much it as far as my video. Um, I also have a pair of Linen 14s. These right here actually. Did a video on them a while back. These are actually for sale on eBay right now. I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out if you do want them. 180 for the auction. No. 170 if you want to bid on them. 190 to just buy them straight up. So do check that out. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the real Chuck T. Like I said. I will be um, sharing a lot of different information on eBay, different finds I pick up, different finds that I that I see. I'll be blasting all that out on my Twitter account. So no matter what size it is, so follow me on there. See so y'all can find some nice stuff. Anytime I, I get a good deal, 
I was going to pass it on to somebody if I can't get it. But um, that's pretty much it. I'll holler at y'all later. The sky's falling, the wind is calling, stand for something or die in the morning. Section 80, high power.